Absolutely. Put your cross in a box. This is not based on voting for something. This is based on you understanding this train of thought and working in whatever capacity suits you and your personal life and your own personal attributes to work towards this direction. If you don't understand it implicitly and you can't back yourself up with objective reasoning, critical thinking, well-founded research studies and facts, not opinions, then this isn't going to come about anyway. So, mm. uh, in fact, I had this with um with a girl with a girl at one of the Q and A's I do at a secondary school. She said this is brilliant, and I said no, it isn't. And she went what? <laughs> what? You know? And I was like, well, you haven't you haven't even mentioned anything about whether this is communism or not. Yeah. You haven't said anything about what lazy but you know well, what people what are people going to do? What's going to incentivize them? If, if people get everything they want in this system, honey, they're going to sit around on their arse all day doing nothing, aren't they? And she said, well, well, I suppose so. And I said, so you agree with that statement? She said, well, well, yeah, what will people do? And I said, well, there you go. It's not important what I say next and how I answer the question. It's the fact that you didn't even think to ask it. Hmm. You're yeah. willing to accept that this, this wonderful utopia that I'm talking about sounds hunky-dory and you're walking off into it you know, like, just, I'm not a politician on a doorstep here. And she's like, so you came here to convince me of an idea that then you're trying to unconvince me to, uh, about. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, I am. I've come here because I, I want to present an idea to you that should, and I, I should hopefully want to make it interesting enough so that you then go away and check it out further. That's all I'm asking. I'm not asking people to sign up to it. In fact, if anybody... At the end of my talks today and anything says, oh, where do we sign up? You didn't think about it hard enough. Mm. And actually, you probably you, you, and you need to do more research. Mm. Yeah, so, I think with some people, they just need to have that critical thinking kick start. You know, when you know, when people say to me, you're right, I, I immediately ask them, am I? You know, I mean, one of the things I always say, both on the megaphone and also, you know, more or less exactly paraphrase what you say to people at the end of discussions, I say to people, by all means, I don't want you to believe, this is exactly what I say, I say, I don't want you to believe a single word I say. Instead, I would urge you to use what I've said as inspiration to do your own research and don't make your own decision, arrive at your own decision. And that I not once has the conversation ended with them going, oh, you, you know, fuck off, mate, sort of thing. They, they normally they have that sort of like nodding, hmm, sort yeah. of, and they walk. I've never, away. I've never. How can how can anybody possibly? You, you've disarmed them. Mm. You know, no, I don't want to um, have an objective uh, answer to any of my criticisms. I don't. Um, I'd rather just sign on your dotted line because I think your idea sounds great or I'd rather just ignore your idea because I don't want to do any research because they know what's coming after that. They know that, that you're going to say, well, how can you possibly know I'm telling the truth without doing any research? Yeah, in terms of them thinking it's a good idea. And if they think it's a bad idea and they say, sod you, I don't want to do any research, you say, well, how can you possibly know that your worldview is completely accurate unless you're willing to check out the information I'm presenting? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, and, and people would say in both of those cases, you know, that people can't just go, well, because I just do. Because it's just like, yeah, well, you, you just don't actually. Yeah. It's a perfectly reasonable position to take. That's what the scientific method is. It's a perfectly reasonable position. It requires you to question it. It requires you to update your knowledge upon questioning it. That's what I love about it. Absolutely. Is, you know, is that it, it doesn't have this human flawed decision making process that we, we have called thinking. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's flawed. You know, people don't quite get this. They think that, I mean, I suppose it comes from the, the ego side of a human being where they have to justify their existence through belief in one thing or another. I mean, we said, you know, we have an absence of belief, but it's not quite true. We have a belief in what's evidential until the point where it isn't. Mm. So well, that's... You could call that a belief. Problem is you're getting into semantics. Yeah, you're getting into what a word means. 
My point yeah. is, is that a human being has to have some level of um, ego and self-identity and self-worth to sort of exist in a meaningful and happy life, I would say. So when you come up against someone and you're saying your value system is upside down, wrong and back to front and needs to completely turn around and then you expect it to ruffle no feathers. In fact, in yeah. that sense, Adam, That's it doesn't matter how sensible the idea is we're talking about, dude. It's our problem. We should have expected people to be pissed about it. Mm, absolutely. Nobody and likes that challenge. It's part of their evolutionary survival mechanism. Yeah. I think, you know what? I've been thinking of coming at a lecture from this direction where you basically right. say, OK, intelligent design. Let's go with the larynal nerve. I think it's called the larynal nerve. Where basically, I think it starts somewhere around back here. Mm. It's supposed to be an optical nerve, nerve system that runs through to your brain. But it doesn't. Yeah. It goes down your neck, right, round the bottom half of your lung and back up the other side to the bit it needs to go to. Interesting. Right. The interesting thing about this is obviously if it was designed, it would just go straight back. But, <laughs> but it's not designed. It's evolved. And the evolutionary compensation for having to do that detour was never worth it for the thing it was trying to evolve into. In giraffes, yeah. it's even longer. You think it's like... 15 foot out the way. Yeah? And so it's, it's the most stupid fucking design you could possibly think of <laughs> next to the human eye. Everybody's like, oh, the human eye is a brilliant piece of design. It's bollocks. <laughs> There's about 15 different stages of things that have to go before you actually see the image the right way up. The eye, if left to its own devices, would flip an image back to front and upside down. But for evolution and a load of other tag-ons, we've been able to turn it round. I'll tell you what, if we're a design man, if the way we think and um, the way our body functions is a design, this is one shit design. Yeah. It's not I, a well designed you... tool. What, what I'm trying to say is I want to come at a thing from an angle where I say, first of all, do you see how flawed your thinking is, your body is, this is, this is, and this is? Now, why is it that we've got to the stage where we've got trains and cars and TVs and radios and refrigerators and all of this great shit, yeah, when our own personal human design is so bad? Mm. The, the one thing we have that's outside of our own human design that we've come through from trial and error and lots of endeavor has been the scientific method. Now, yeah. possibly... The reason that the best decision making process our species has ever known, bar none, the scientific process has been applied to everything but our social model is because our social model brings into question ourselves everything. and our, us as human beings and pointing the finger at us and saying our design in terms of your ego, your belief system mm. is not fit for making decisions. It's not good enough. You like are not good enough. Yeah, it's like uh, applying the science. I don't like that. That's why it's never been applied to our social system, is my theory, is that it's never been applied to our social system because essentially we're not good enough at making decisions. And we don't like it. We don't like the fact our shit stinks. It's almost like the act of applying the scientific method to the social system is almost like removing that final Jenga block that would cause the whole stack to come down. And we're like, but we want to keep it up. You know, look at that. We, you know, we can take out this block. We could take out this block. It's still standing. Oh, but no, 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 don't touch that one. No, 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 don't you dare touch that one. Yeah. <laughs> that will um, that will cause everything to come crashing down. Exactly. And think of how many of those belief systems you've got tied up in this shit, man. Mm. You know, you've got religion, you've got money, you've got government, you've got politics, you've got power. It's entangled into all of that. You've got scarcity, whether real or contrived. And then the ultimate and subsequent judgment upon all of those systems, um, artificial and uh, abstract systems of operations that have led to people's convoluted view on human nature, uh, which people build up another religion around with no evidence for any of them. It's all second or third order abstractions based in no attachment to physical imperative understanding of natural law and how it works or its functions. Also, so, second or third hand information as well. I mean, you, you think of what the fucking hell, Adam. You know, in hindsight, mate, any time someone comes around to this train of thought, Adam, that you explain to them and they truly get it, 
is actually almost that astounding. Considering all of the mental blockers they have, it's astounding. Mm. You, I mean, they, about there's a certain process that has to happen first. I mean, like, say, individuals like you or me, were you introduced to this, or did you discover this by yourself? I was introduced to the um, the first film by <laughs> uh, a director of, of my band's music videos at the time. Yeah. I, I already knew something that fishy was up. Obviously, yeah. with, with 9-11, I already knew it was a bit odd. Yeah. Um, with Building 7. Is the main, is my main thing, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, that's but, where I, I was, I was big on that at the time. I was kind of like, well, regardless of everything else, how the hell did this happen? Mm-hmm. Um, and anyway, but yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we were already of that mindset where we were geared towards some motivation to either question things or make things better. We just weren't pointed in the right direction. You know, we weren't aware of what direction we needed to be pointed towards and then just go full steam ahead towards yeah. that direction. We we already had that inherently in us, whether it was, you know, our formative education or how we coalesced as a human being. You know, we were already receptive to this uh, to this train of thought, but some people, they're just the complete opposite and we cannot expect them to just, like, click as easily as we did. Yeah. You know what? There's always a way in. It's it's much like um, again Jacques' thing with the Ku Klux Klan, where he mm-hmm. won their trust by assimilating himself to their values, and then um, showed a big projector screen and played a voice in a sort of Aristotelian English voice, and said to the guys in the Ku Klux Klan, "So who do you think that is then?" And they said, "Well, it's probably an Oxford English professor, or you know, white upper class." very well-educated guy, and he turned the mm. screen on and it's a black guy. Mm. You know, and that, and they suddenly went, holy shit, you know, and basically shook up their world and they said, you mean that, that you know, uh, coloured people... Black people have are, brains? Black, <laughs> black people have brains? You know? And he's like, yeah, there can be... Everybody's a product of their culture, as are you, and so are your values, you know? And they disbanded the clan. Now... Nice one. The thing is, is that... I had this conversation with someone with regards to gypsies, gypos, um, as we call them, because gyp- gypsies are a little bit more of the traditional kind. Gypos yeah. are the guys that, that um, steal your, your spatula when they break in your house. Um, <laughs> but not to mention your teaspoons and everything else uh, and the light things. But the yeah, um, the kind of labels we we attribute to to those has become way too subjective with the bias. You know? Yeah. And and they were saying you'll never change them. And I told them the Ku Klux Klan story, and um, you know that I just told you. And I said, mm-hmm. you know, those people were pretty ingrained. There must be a way through to these people, and, and she wouldn't have it. Mm-hmm. Uh, even after I said that, and I thought, shit, that was a really good explanation. <laughs> but it comes back to what I was saying earlier. I mean, I don't know whether you or other people listening to this could have come up with a better, you know, when she said, well, jippos can't be changed. They're just going to always be like that. And I said, well, actually, would you say that? And I even said, would you say like the Ku Klux Klan were like about as closed minded? She went, yeah, I guess so. You know, they are pretty stringent racists. And I was like, okay. Then I told her this story and I said, so the Klan got turned around. She said, yeah, yeah, they did. So what do you think about Jippos? She went, nah. (laughs) I couldn't Um, think of a better way in, Adam. I was just like, well, I'm done. (laughs) I don't know what I've got nothing after that. Yeah. Have you found sometimes that through discussing these ideas with blatantly belligerent people, you've found that you've developed very sharp tools that you think to yourself, right, I've got some awesome logic bombs that if you were to drop them on someone who's receptive, they'd be like, do you know what, mate? I'm actually going to look that up. Cheers for that, man. You think to yourself, I've developed a logic bomb so awesome that if I drop it on someone who's belligerent, it would just stop them in their tracks. But have you have you found that with those with those kind of people, it just does not face them? <laughs> um, it depends. Yes, I don't think someone who's belligerent is particularly a tool sharpener. They certainly help me with self reflection. The tool sharpeners are people who are actually very intelligent and able to raise a well articulated point. Yeah. You know, at least gets my circuits flowing on whether I'm right or wrong or 
or what have you and forces me to go away and do a bit more research. And by the same token, there's sometimes when I feel I didn't answer a question well enough or the person 